A mega high-end hotel is said to be constructed inside Nairobi National Park, a project that has gotten wildlife lovers worried. Conservationists fear that the project will add to the external and never-ending pressures that have been mated on wild animals at the park. Josh has that untold story. It's early in the morning in Nairobi National Park. The hippos chilling, waiting for the sunrise, and the birds are waiting to swim. This park, the only one found in a city globally, was established and gazetted by the government in 1946. The park occupies more than 11,000 acres. Initially, the animals from the park moved freely to their neighborhood without disturbance, but human-wildlife conflict became a norm around the park over time. And now, environmental experts say the trend is worrying. Godfrey Otieno Onyango is an environmental scientist and a lead expert with NEMA. Green bulk hunter in Mexico, Kidogo. Kuna hi SGR in Mengia. Kuna hi invasive species in Mengia. Tunaskia nyati zimetolewa wapi kutoka kwenye park ya Nairobi zimepelekwa Savo National Park. Swali ni hivi, ah yote ni dalili ya nini? Kuna mpango pengine tujui imefanywa park na kula tu pole pole pole. Pole pole. miaka zinazidi kwenda park inazidi kwa kidogo kidogo. Alafu tutasema atuitaji park. Continuous mushrooming of projects in the park have posed a threat to the ecosystem, the SGR and now the high-end hotel master plan. Environment enthusiasts are opposed to the hotel project. Building further construction is deliberately killing the ecosystem in Nairobi National Park. The radiance of the morning light, the beauty soon to fade, the pure energy, the metaphor of virginity is now threatened by hard times. Nairobi's city human population has grown from thousands of people in the colonial era to over 4 million people today. That growth in human population has exerted pressure on many natural resources and human-wildlife conflict have become a norm. A development that contributed to confining the animals to the west and south of Nairobi. Now, Nairobi National Park. A wild animal is just like a human being. It will go through depression because it's aware that it's not supposed to be here this particular season. And when it's stressed, at the same time, the population is going to be affected. The big problem which I'm seeing is that as we get closer to these animals, we shall experience more zoonotic diseases. Yeah? Zoonotic diseases are those diseases which are transmitted from wild animal to human beings. Okay? And the same with things like COVID, which has happened. This park is home to over 500 bird species and different animal species like Cape Buffalo, Baboons, Grant's Zebra, Lions, Impala, Maasai Giraffe and indigenous plants like Acacia Bushes, Olea Africana and many others. Maureen Some, a young environment conservationist who runs Wild Now Foundation, launched in 2019, says the expected hotel project in the park is a misadvised project which did not take into consideration the welfare of the life of animals in the park. Furthering the construction actually will worsen the conditions of wildlife species and probably even the population will reduce when we already know that for you to have uh, um, to improve on the tourists in tourism in Kenya, we need wildlife. If this is in the essence of improving the tourism experience, then I think we have failed as, as Kenyans. So as much as we are trying to deal with human wildlife conflict, as much as we are trying to um, 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 also improve on our tourism experience, let's also not forget what wildlife needs and what hum we as humans want to for our economy. The wildlife here enjoy their catch. Some are gazing and others Santa Leslie. The park is home, but fear is reef that this homely feeling could soon be gone. The home will soon get new visitors.
We do need to come up with ways to improve their experiences as tourists, but that doesn't mean we need to go ahead and interfere with the normal lifestyle of a wild animal. Wildlife needs space to be a wild animal. Wildlife needs to thrive in its natural habitat. And the best way to deal with um, improving the tourism experience is to improve on conservation. This unique recreational facility that receives guests locally and internationally has left game drive lovers in a dilemma. This park has about 38 lions. And one of the worst things about what we are doing to this park as humans is because you can come to this park all day long and not get to see a single lion. 100 square kilometers of land with 38 lions and because of human activity, you can actually come and spend a whole day or two and not get to see lions because of the interference we're doing with this park. Uh, but despite that, it's a beautiful place to come to. There's many different places you can go to. There are picnic spots. There's, uh, you know, places where you can come with your family and just enjoy family time. Uh, it's a pl nice place to just come sit and just listen to the noises and sounds of nature and, you know, just distress about what go is going on about life. Fencing the park, which is now 70%, and the construction of a high-end hotel inside the park will, in the long run, affect the animals and the vegetation. And closing down on, on that corridor, fencing the, the southern part and making it into an, a confined area for wildlife will be nothing but a big zoo in the long run. If you go to Hyena Dam, for instance, uh, a lot of bird species have, you know, we've lost a lot of bird uh, species. We no longer have raids. Why? Because of uh, pollution flowing in into Nairobi National Park and all that. So there's, 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 there's a lot that needs to be done, you know, uh, in partnership with the National Environmental Management Authority, Kenya Life Service, the Ministry and all that, to help solve the situation. For any project carried out by the government to meet the sustainability threshold in any ecosystem, it has to focus on the benefits for the posterity and the life of the creatures around it. Sustainability is the ability to use our environment or resources in such a way that you don't compromise the ability of future generations to use the same or to enjoy the same. We reached to KWS for a comment on the planned controversial project, but until the time of airing this story, we did not get any response. After posts online about the construction of a road within the park went viral, KWS denied the claim saying the construction that is ongoing is being carried out by a local contractor who is improving the road, joining KWS headquarters to central workshop inside the park. Reynand Bonke, a friend to the park, highlights on possible alternatives that can be implemented instead of having new projects. We have alternatives. Of course, there are some uh, facilities that are existing uh, within Nairobi National Park. We have the Nairobi Tented Camps, we have the Clubhouse, we have the Rangers Restaurant, all of which are supposed to be improved rather than uh, bringing in new development activities. Ukileta kitu ambacho ni kigeni kwa mazingira ambayo ni ya wanyama, inakuwa unaharibu yale mazingira. Kwa sababu, hii nyumba ama hoteli haikuji kuongeza maisha ya wanyama pori kuwa bora. The future memories are here. The students pursuing environment-related courses are worried what the future holds for the park and for them. Hatuwaoni wanyama siku hizi, hatuwaoni wanyama hata wakipita barabara kwa sababu hawana hiyo nafasi ya kukaa kama wanyama. Nairobi National Park is part of us. Let's protect it. Nairobi National Park is part of us. Let's protect it. According to the Constitution, Chapter 42, any project that is intended in the park, the government has to involve the community through public participation. I wonder where we carried out public participation. We cannot talk of online to be public participation. How many Kenyans have access to computers? That's a big question we need to ask ourselves. How many? And even if they have computers, we need something which is needed, the communities which are living around the park, the people who use the park, they should be involved in this. The stakeholders now want the government to take the park serious and protect against external forces that could send it to the oblivion. We're just calling upon the government, especially the minister, uh, Honorable Najib Balala, to try and find a solution rather than um, suffocating this park more. 
Nairobi National Park is home to different wildlife species, but then at the same time, we as Kenyans are privileged enough to have a national park in a city that gives people the opportunity to go to their offices and at the same time they can go for a getaway during the weekend. Josh Onsare, TV 47, Nairobi.